first I'm going to discuss a government, a legal government ID. It's actually a residency. It doesn't say that on the card, but it is a government issued form of identification, perfectly legal, perfectly valid. You could open up bank accounts. You could use this ID inside the country, right? Pretty freely because it's that country's government ID. And there have been reports of people opening bank accounts other places. But the most important point over here of this ID, the purpose of this ID, and the reason why I'm saying it, because it does not list your nationality. Now, this makes a huge difference for someone, let's say, coming from the US or Western countries. And as I said earlier, this is a residency, legal residency, and it takes 15 to 20 minutes to apply for this online. No physical going anywhere, no physical paperwork. Any kind of ID can be used to obtain this government issued residency come ID and in a couple of weeks they just mail it to you to any address that you want so you don't have to physically be in the country from which you're applying or you're showing your ID from they literally can ship it anywhere that you like towards the end of the video I'm going to discuss if you should really look at this seriously is this good not good uh, and my opinion on it right the most interesting use case of this is a lot of exchanges crypto exchanges don't like american residents they don't want to deal with any of the u.s laws any restrictions any issues they don't want to play games they don't want to take chances so they uh, disqualify or didn't allow american residents to apply on those exchanges and here is an id which does not list your nationality interestingly and it's a government ID. There are a few exchanges that readily accept this form of ID without the nationality. They don't care who is behind it, right? And as I said earlier, this is not legal advice or tax advice. Always consult your home country requirements. Make sure you follow the law of wherever you are residing or wherever you are a citizen of. Now, the exchanges that this seems to work on, the biggest one is Kraken. And obviously, you got to use the international version. Some of the examples are BitGet, uh, Bybit, KuCoin, Pionex, and Tidex. So all these exchanges pretty much accept this, and you could pass your KYC pretty easily. There have been reports of this working at motor vehicles divisions, as I covered earlier, banks, etc. Now, because this is all a 15-minute application, it's all online, it's a digital residency. The future use cases are pretty interesting. They're talking about providing physical addresses, phone numbers, uh, and even meters that you can rent in the country. So you have a real physical setup. You can start your e-business. And this is one of the cheapest residencies that a legal residency, right? That you can get for approximately 250 US dollars. That's it. It's for a year. You can keep renewing it. It comes in five years, 10 years. So you have multiple options of getting it for longer if that's what you're looking for. And this is the digital residency from Palau. Palau ID. A lot of people might have come across this. This is the RNS ID. I'm going to discuss some unique use cases of this, right? And then tell you if I feel if this is any good, should you waste your time thinking about it? Or does this have some real use cases? Before we hop onto the website and see how you can quickly get this, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to turn on the bell notification and subscribe to the channel so I can get you more valuable tips, tricks, and legal hacks to protect yourself and to maximize your opportunities globally. Now, the fastest way to this website, I've left a link in the description. Now, I particularly like Palau. It depends heavily upon the US for a lot of the infrastructural help. It's a tiny country, so for its protection, for its security, it heavily relies on the US. I particularly liked Palau because of its president. The interview by Balachi, an influencer who had interviewed the president of Palau, a pretty interesting interview where I got to know a lot about the country and what the president has in mind. But starting the Palau RNS ID program is a very interesting step taken by Palau, one of its kind. Now, if you open up your browser, just type Palau Digital Residency. The first link shows as RNS ID. You click on this Palau Digital Residency program. You're not going to probably read this, but this is important. So I'm going to quickly run through some important points here. The Palau Digital Residency only enables you to gain access to services that are available to Palau. 
Please note that the Palau Digital Residency serves as an identification document, not a certification of citizenship. Palau does not impose taxes on income you make outside of Palau. So that's a very interesting point. This is a territorial tax system. With Palau Residency ID, you can make extension of 180 days of stay per entry. This is a useful one because once you get entry in Palau, uh, usually you got to exit once your stay is up. Thankfully, Americans get a one full year, but then if you have this ID, you can keep extending from inside of Palau a couple of times. So you're getting an additional 180 days, which is useful. Many countries typically don't tax their citizens or foreigners if they stay for less than 180 days. Notable exceptions do exist, such as the United States. Please always stay on top of the tax obligations in your current country of residence. All right, got it. And it has a picture of the ID. The biggest notable interesting fact about this ID is that does not list your nationality. Now, intentional or not, that's besides the point, but looks like this is specifically designed to be crypto friendly. The price of this ID is 248. This is the one year version. So let's go and apply for this one. The other big benefit of this card is it provides you with a soft version of the ID in form of an NFT. So if you're trying to authenticate or verify yourself on the blockchain, you have the soft copy, then you also have the physical hard copy of the ID. You need the physical copy in order to extend your stays and to show to the bank or some of those exchanges because you got to send in the images of your ID to some of those exchanges. So you want to have a physical copy. It's very important. Let's select a trial version one year, right? Here it says, get it now. And you go to select a one year version by now. And then this is the page where it's going to confirm the price. It's going to give you the payment options. This can be purchased with crypto. Of course, it's crypto friendly. But let's say you're doing a credit card payment. You select the type of payment. You agree to the terms and conditions, place order and pay. You enter in your payment information and then you successfully check out. Now, before I jump to the conclusion, is this useful? Should you get this? If you have missed my video on a very useful real residency, a full blown residency, not a digital residency that you can obtain in one day, the car can be obtained in a single day. If you've missed that video, hop onto the link that appears above. It covers how you can get an absolutely real ID, which then leads to citizenship and one of the most powerful citizenships that you can obtain. It's a flexible residency. So if missed it make sure to watch that video let's get back to the conclusion should you get this well if you like traveling and based on where you're coming from let's say you're coming from the US then there's a direct flight from Guam that goes to Palau right so if you're catching that flight you have a residency it's a semi real residency right it is digital it doesn't say that it's digital so the government issued identification is good uh, if you're using it for KYC again check your laws but it's an interesting use case you can extend your residency from inside the country so it does have some tangible value in terms of physical presence and now because it's a Palau government issued ID I'm thinking it should work at some banks instead of Palau you're obviously able to get physical addresses, set up some sort of real residency in Palau. So those are some useful use cases for this type of ID. Now, if you're not from the US, let's say you're coming from Asia, then Taipei has direct flights to Palau. So that's an interesting use case, right? Hong Kong, Taipei, you can utilize those transit points to eventually get to Palau. Again, the same use case for someone coming in from Asia. If you want to protect your nationality, a lot of Asian countries, some of them are draconian dictatorships. So for some unique use case, you want to protect your nationality, then it could be uh, something interesting. Overall, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're a savvy residency collector. If you like collecting residencies, you see one of these use cases that could apply in your case under limited circumstances. You can play with it. Some people like to get it no matter what. It's fun to have more residencies. This is a semi-real residency in some ways. Always interesting to have. This is the only ID, as I said, which does not list your nationality. All right, I hope you liked this video. And before you go, if you haven't checked out, hop onto this video. This is the one which talks about the one day procedure for obtaining a real residency card that eventually could lead to citizenship. All right, catch you in this one.